In this video, we're taking a closer look at secondary flight control surfaces, the crucial, yet often overlooked systems that fine-tune an aircraft's performance, ensuring safe and efficient flight operations. Unlike primary controls, which handle basic movements like pitch, yaw, and roll, secondary flight controls focus on fine-tuning the aircraft's behavior. From enhancing lift during takeoff, to minimizing drag and helping with smoother, more controlled landings, these systems make all the difference. Come along as we break down the various types of secondary flight controls, explore their unique roles, and discover how they enhance the aircraft's overall aerodynamic performance. There are several secondary, or auxiliary, flight control surfaces. Here's a breakdown of their names, locations, and functions as seen on most large aircraft. Flaps are found on most aircraft. They are usually inboard on the wing's trailing edges adjacent to the fuselage. Leading edge flaps are also common. They extend forward and down from the inboard wing leading edge. The flaps are lowered to increase the camber of the wings and provide greater lift and control at slow speeds. They enable landing at slower speeds and shorten the amount of runway required for takeoff and landing. The amount that the flaps extend and the angle they form with the wing can be selected from the flight deck. Typically, flaps can extend up to 45 to 50 degrees. There are various kinds of flaps. Plain flaps form the trailing edge of the wing when the flap is in the retracted position. The airflow over the wing continues over the upper and lower surfaces of the flap, making the trailing edge of the flap essentially the trailing edge of the wing. The plain flap is hinged so that the trailing edge can be lowered. This increases wing camber and provides greater lift. A split flap is normally housed under the trailing edge of the wing. It is usually just a braced flat metal plate hinged at several places along its leading edge. The upper surface of the wing extends to the trailing edge of the flap. When deployed, the split flap trailing edge lowers away from the trailing edge of the wing. Airflow over the top of the wing remains the same. Airflow under the wing now follows the camber created by the lowered split flap, increasing lift. Fowler flaps not only lower the trailing edge of the wing when deployed but also slide aft, effectively increasing the area of the wing. This creates more lift via the increased surface area, as well as the wing camber. When stowed, the Fowler flap typically retracts up under the wing trailing edge similar to a split flap. An enhanced version of the Fowler flap is a set of flaps that actually contains more than one aerodynamic surface. In this configuration, the flap consists of a fore flap, a mid flap, and an aft flap. When deployed, each flap section slides aft on tracks as it lowers. The flap sections also separate leaving an open slot between the wing and the fore flap, as well as between each of the flap sections. Air from the underside of the wing flows through these slots. The result is that the laminar flow on the upper surfaces is enhanced. The greater camber and effective wing area increase overall lift. Heavy aircraft often have leading edge flaps that are used in conjunction with the trailing edge flaps. While they are not installed or operate independently, their use with trailing edge flaps can greatly increase wing camber and lift. When stowed, leading edge flaps retract into the leading edge of the wing. Activation of the trailing edge flaps automatically deploys the leading edge flaps, which are driven out of the leading edge and downward, extending the camber of the wing. Another leading edge device which extends wing camber is a slat. Slats can be operated independently of the flaps with their own switch in the flight deck. Slats not only extend out of the leading edge of the wing increasing camber and lift, but most often, when fully deployed leave a slot between their trailing edges and the leading edge of the wing. This increases the angle of attack at which the wing will maintain its laminar airflow, resulting in the ability to fly the aircraft slower with a reduced stall speed and still maintain control. A spoiler is a device found on the upper surface of many heavy and high-performance aircraft. It is stowed flush to the wing's upper surface. When deployed, it raises up into the airstream and disrupts the laminar airflow of the wing, thus reducing lift. Spoilers are unique in that they may also be fully deployed on both wings to act as speed brakes. The reduced lift and increased drag can quickly reduce the speed of the aircraft in flight. Dedicated speed brake panels similar to flight spoilers in construction can also be found on the upper surface of the wings of heavy and high-performance aircraft. They are designed specifically to increase drag and reduce the speed of the aircraft when deployed. 
The speed brake control in the flight deck can deploy all spoiler and speed brake surfaces fully when operated. The force of the air against a control surface during the high speed of flight can make it difficult to move and hold that control surface in the deflected position. A control surface might also be too sensitive for similar reasons. Several different tabs are used to aid with these types of problems. Let's take a closer look at the various tabs and their uses. While in flight, it is desirable for the pilot to be able to take their hands and feet off of the controls and have the aircraft maintain its flight condition. Trim's tabs are designed to allow this. Most trim tabs are small movable surfaces located on the trailing edge of a primary flight control surface. The most common installation on small aircraft is a single trim tab attached to the trailing edge of the elevator. Most trim tabs are manually operated by a small, vertically mounted control wheel. However, a trim crank may be found in some aircraft. The flight deck control includes a trim tab position indicator. Placing the trim control in the full nose down position moves the trim tab to its full up position. With the trim tab up and into the airstream, the airflow over the horizontal tail surface tends to force the trailing edge of the elevator down. This causes the tail of the aircraft to move up and the nose to move down. If the trim tab is set to the full nose up position, the tab moves to its full down position. In this case, the air flowing under the horizontal tail surface hits the tab and forces the trailing edge of the elevator up, reducing the elevator's angle of attack. This causes the tail of the aircraft to move down and the nose to move up. The aerodynamic phenomenon of moving a trim tab in one direction to cause the control surface to experience a force moving in the opposite direction is exactly what occurs with the use of balance tabs. Often, it is difficult to move a primary control surface due to its surface area and the speed of the air rushing over it. Deflecting a balance tab hinged at the trailing edge of the control surface in the opposite direction of the desired control surface movement causes a force to position the surface in the proper direction with reduced force to do so. Balance tabs are usually linked directly to the control surface linkage so that they move automatically when there is an input for control surface movement. They also can double as trim tabs, if adjustable in the flight deck. Servo tabs are very similar in operation and appearance to the trim tabs. A servo tab is a small portion of a flight control surface that deploys in such a way that it helps to move the entire flight control surface in the direction that the pilot wishes it to go. A servo tab is a dynamic device that deploys to decrease the pilot's workload and destabilize the aircraft. Servo tabs are sometimes referred to as flight tabs and are used primarily on large aircraft. They aid the pilot in moving the control surface and in holding it in the desired position. Only the servo tab moves in response to movement of the pilot's flight control, and the force of the airflow on the servo tab then moves the primary control surface. Another device for aiding the pilot of high-speed aircraft is the spring tab. The control horn is free to pivot on the hinge axis of the surface, but it is restrained by a spring. For normal operation when control forces are light, the spring is not compressed. The horn acts as though it were rigidly attached to the surface. At high air speeds when the control forces are too high for the pilot to operate properly, the spring collapses and the control horn deflects the tab in the direction to produce an aerodynamic force that aids the pilot in moving the surface. Anti-servo tabs work in the same manner as balance tabs except, instead of moving in the opposite direction, they move in the same direction as the trailing edge of the stabilator. In addition to decreasing the sensitivity of the stabilator, an anti-servo tab also functions as a trim device to relieve control pressure and maintain the stabilator in the desired position. The fixed end of the linkage is on the opposite side of the surface from the horn on the tab. When the trailing edge of the stabilator moves up, the linkage forces the trailing edge of the tab up. When the stabilator moves down, the tab also moves down. Conversely, trim tabs on elevators move opposite of the control surface. Many small aircraft have a non-movable metal trim tab on the rudder. This tab is bent in one direction or the other while on the ground to apply a trim force to the rudder. The correct displacement is determined by trial and error. Usually, small adjustments are necessary until the aircraft no longer skids left or right during normal cruising flight. These secondary flight control surfaces all work together to make flying more efficient, safer, and more comfortable. 
Whether it's improving lift during low speed flight or increasing drag for a quick descent, each of these surfaces has a specific purpose. Thanks for watching.